Hello my fellow nerds, today we are upgrading an HP Pavilion Slimline PC. I'll be doing a budget build for a friend, update its parts for Windows 10 and other general uses. So grab your tools and let's take it apart. Want to see a more detailed video on how I take it apart, check my channel later on for an extended disassembly for this PC. Now that we have an empty case, let's start with the parts for the upgrade. We are placing a crucial BX500 with 240 gigs for an SSD. Client's petition, we're gonna leave the original hard drive 320 gigs for extra storage and its disk drive. A Flex ATX 350 watt power supply. It's smaller than the original, but still will be better than the 150 watt that it had. You can see it's like a normal power supply. It has its motherboard connection, CPU, hard drive, maybe less connections, but it will work for this build. We're gonna use a 3.5 inch Intel CPU cooler. Now comes the CPU. We will be using an Intel Quad Core i5. 2400S 2.5 GHz processor. Actually, you may recognize it from the thermal paste removal video. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. And for the last, the motherboard. We'll be using a Zotac H67 ITX CE. It's a mini ITX, second generation Intel Core with a LGA1155 socket. It have a few years, but it had good performance. It can even run DDR3 memory with a speed of 1333 MHz and can hold up to 16 GB. Has Wi-Fi, plenty of USBs, HDMI, display ports. You can even install a low profile GPU. But I will keep it simple. I'll leave it to my friend so he can improve it later on. Now the RAM, 8 tech, 8 gigabytes DDR3 with a 1600 megahertz memory. Not that fast, but faster than the 2 gigs that it had. A huge improvement for this budget build. With all that said, let's start with the installation of the IO shield. A little push from the inside and it's secured in place. Nice. Now let's start installing some parts outside the case. It's a little easier, a little more comfortable. Okay, let's open the CPU socket casing. Place the processor very carefully, just be careful. Make sure you align its corner arrow with the one on the motherboard. Never forget that. We close it. Now let's place the thermal paste. I'm using the Noctua NTH1. I love the results of this one. Today I'm using the spreader method, but you can use the P, the X, just use the one you like. All right, guys, you see I placed that amount, but to be honest, later on, I added a little more because it wasn't enough for the CPU. So my bad. I'll do another video using the P method and show you how much actually to use. All right, now let's install the cooler fan. Use a flat head to turn knobs and push until you hear a click. Connect your four pin CPU cooler Let's install the flex power supply. I love the size of this one. Screw it to the case. Now let's position the motherboard and align it with the IO shield. Now we complete the installation with four screws. Now let's connect the cables. The CPU four pin connector. Motherboard 24 pin connector. Now it's the RAM. Don't forget the two leads before placing the RAM. Let's make some space for it. Use your two thumbs, push it with a light pressure down, and you'll see the two leads close itself while the RAM goes in place. Next, let's connect the front panel audio header. It's near the CPU power connector. Next is the front panel header located here. They look something like this. Hard drive and power LED connectors and the reset and power switches connectors. Now I'm not going to cover those in this video because of their size, but if you want to know more how they go, check out the PDF manual for this motherboard that I will leave on the description. Now let's finish to install the hard drive. Let's not forget, there are two screws that secure this section. Now, as you can see, we may have a small problem with cable management, 
Plus the length of these cables doesn't really help. But we will do our best and try to organize as much as we can with zip ties. We don't have much space to go, so I'll let this one pass. Let's place the disk drive, secure it with a screw. Now let's connect the SATA cables. We're gonna need three for power and three for data. Last part, the solid state drive. Now you may ask yourself, how I'm gonna install this SSD to this case? Well, because I don't want to damage the case with new holes or anything like that, I will mount it with a Gorilla mounting tape. It even holds like 15 pounds. So yeah, it's not going anywhere. If you wanna check it out, I will leave it on the description. Now I need an extra setup power cable for the disk drive. So for this, I'll use this adapter. It's a Molex adapter to a SATA power cable. One last small data cable for the SATA, for the disk drive, and that's it. Let's close it, place the front panel, and let's test it. Let's use my handy bootable drive with Windows 10 64-bit. It goes up, there you go, let's go to the BIOS. Remember to hit those escape or F2, and let's make sure our parts are identified. All right, CPU is working, our memory is here too, our SSD is being registered. Now we make sure the Windows USB installer is on the top. We save and exit, and let's install the OS. This is the part where you need to be patient and we'll be restarting a few times. Let the software work, and we have a clean installation. Let's now hit the Control alt delete on the keyboard and open the task manager. There, you, we want to check the parts. I can see I slightly overclocked the CPU from 2.5 to 2.6. Not too much, because I don't want the temps to go up. Like right now, I can see the extra storage hard drive is not format. So let's get it ready. All right. Now it's ready to go. Now I want to squeeze as much performance as I can. So I'll custom adjust uh, the visuals for best performance. I'll let do a more detailed video on this optimizing tips and tweaks. You can download other programs to monitor like CPU-Z or HW-Info64. They're free and they're pretty accurate. With them, let's do the last checkup. I'm gonna do a small bench to see how the temps perform. All right, so here it says that its average CPU temp is 54 Celsius. Not bad. It's not gonna hurt. It only has the cooler fan, but I want to make it a little lower. So let's see if it improves adding another intake fan. All right, I'm, I added another fan. I'm sure it will help other component temps like the motherboard or the RAM. I improvised a little bit, but it will stay there. So let's see if there's a change. Yep, I already see the difference. It's doing a lot better. It wasn't 54 Celsius. The current temp is 38 Celsius and average is 42. So yeah, it made a difference. Now the question is, what my friend will be able to do with this revived computer? Well, he can do general use, use programs like Word, Excel, do homework, Zoom streaming with friends or family, and it can still play a few low gaming games without a GPU. I tested games like Age of Empires 3, Minecraft, or Stardew Valley, and they played awesome. It's not a gaming build, but it definitely can be upgraded for better performance later on. So how we call this one? I will say it's a budget small factor general use PC, updated for 2021 use. I hope you guys liked this video. For more information, Read the description or ask me down below. If you are interested in the parts I used, hit the links. It will help the channel a lot. Don't forget to subscribe. And my friends, see you next time on the Nerd Workbench.